Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today is a very exciting day for Pixel users. We got June 24 feature drop that I have here on my Pixel 8 Pro to show you each and every new change. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the build number and update size. Here on my 8 Pro it's 661 megabytes and the build number is AP28.240605.024. And now let's take a look at the new features. I will start by talking about the animations as they feel much better when compared to the previous version. Everything runs smoothly and also feels more solid. So please let me know in the comments if you feel the same thing after installing June 24 feature drop. Next, the system wide search. And I'm going to show you a couple of new features that we first saw with Android 15. The first one is the labeled search results. Not only this, but you will see a small arrow next to each one, which will allow you to open the app itself if you are not interested in any of the available results. The second change, when you go to the home settings and then search settings, you will no longer see the toggle that says a swipe up to start search, but now it's located under a separate menu item called app list settings, where you can turn the feature on or off. And this one will allow you to immediately show the keyboard once you swipe up to access your system wide search. So that's it when it comes to the system wide search. Now let's talk about one of the most exciting features in this update, which is the ability to mirror your phone's screen to an external display using a USB type C cable. This feature is only available for the Pixel 8, 8a and 8 Pro, or in other words, the G3 models. But let me highlight a couple of important things about this feature. First, not every USB-C cable will allow you to mirror your phone's screen because most of them are just charging cables. I even tried the one included in the box with the Pixel 8 Pro and it didn't allow me to activate the feature. But thankfully, the system will let you know if the cable is not supported. When you expand your notifications shade, you will see a message saying use a different cable and try again, which is very handy. But once you get yourself the correct cable and have your display set to the right input, you will immediately see this message at the bottom of the screen when you connect the cable to your phone saying mirror to external display and you have a button here to confirm or dismiss. And now let's put it into action to show you how well it works. First, it only takes a couple of seconds to mirror your phone's screen, which is very convenient. And I got a very smooth experience while navigating my phone but I wanted to take it a step further. I started with a light game like Tempo Run 2 and I consistently got 60 frames per second without any dropped frames and the game was playable as if it's on the phone. I also tried Asphalt 9 which is a more demanding game. I was getting 60 frames per second most of the time and the lowest number I saw is 57. The phone started to get slightly warmer after a while which is expected in this scenario but there's nothing crazy to worry about and the game was very playable throughout the whole race. Now let's talk about Gcam as it got a couple of new additions. The first one is the manual lens selection, which will allow you to choose between the ultra wide, wide or telephoto on demand without any intervention from the phone. This feature is already available on the 8 Pro since it got released, but now you can do the same on the Pixel Fold, the 6 Pro and 7 Pro, but unfortunately I didn't get it yet on my older Pixel models and that's why I'm showing it to you on the 8 Pro. The second feature will allow you to take better photos without doing anything. On Pixel phones, when you hit the shutter key even once, the phone captures multiple shots to process the HDR. But what's new here, if it detected people in the frame, it will automatically try to pick the best moment where no one is blinking or looking away and use this one as the final outcome. This is very similar to the top shot feature, but it works automatically without any interaction from your side. So that's it when it comes to Gcam and now let's talk about Gemini Nano. If you own a Pixel 8 or a Pixel 8a, now you will get Gemini Nano which was exclusive to the 8 Pro. This feature will allow some of the AI models to work locally on device without the need to communicate with the cloud which will give you faster responses and some of these examples are summarizing recordings in the recorder app or Magic Compose in Google Messages. Google also announced a couple of new features that I didn't get on any of my phones, maybe because they are region specific or they are still rolling out. The first one is the ability to look up unknown phone numbers from within the phone app. All you need to do is to tap on the item and then choose lookup and Google will try to search for this number and give you the results. This feature is available for the Pixel Fold in addition to the Pixel 6 models and newer. The second one is the Find My Device Offline support which will allow you to locate your phone even if it's dead. 
This feature will be available on the Pixel 8, 8a, and 8 Pro, but unfortunately it's region specific and I couldn't get my hands on the list of supported countries and it seems like mine is not one of them. Now let's talk about a couple of Android 15 features that Google silently pushed with this update. The first one is the haptic feedback you get when you change your display brightness. It becomes stronger the more you increase the brightness and then it becomes weaker when you move all the way down and when you push it to the edge you will feel a stronger haptic feedback as if you are hitting something on the side. The second one is the new high quality toggle in the webcam mode that you will find at the top left corner when you use your Pixel phone as a webcam. This one will give you a much better quality based on my testing, but when you activate it for the first time, you will get this acknowledgement saying that this feature will use more power, it will make your phone warmer, which will impact your battery health, and for you to activate the feature, you have to tap on acknowledge, and you have the option to do not show again. Under settings you will also see some hidden changes and the first one is under the display. When you scroll all the way down you will no longer see the screen protector mode toggle because it got its own page called touch sensitivity and when you go inside you will find the same toggle with a graphical representation for the feature. Under sound and vibration and then vibration and haptics when you scroll all the way down, you will see a new toggle to turn off the keyboard vibration. Under storage, the free up space banner at the top will no longer take you to the files app when you tap on it, but it says here, go to files app to manage and free up space. Under security and privacy, and then more security and privacy, you will see a new toggle called allow camera software extensions. It says here, enables the default software implementation of advanced camera features, and I'm not sure how this feature will impact third-party apps camera performance, so let's wait and see. And finally, the passwords and accounts menu item is now called passwords, passkeys, and autofill. So that's it when it comes to the phone, and now let's talk about the new features related to the Pixel Watch. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of them, but let's go through the list anyways. The first one is the car crash detection, now works on your Pixel Watch, same as your phone, so it can detect car crashes and call emergency services for you. The second one is the ability to add PayPal as a payment method in your Google Wallet, but unfortunately it's only available in the US and Germany. The third one is the redesigned home app controls. It seems like this feature is still rolling out, but I will keep you posted in my future Google Apps updates episodes. So that's it when it comes to the new features in June 24 feature drop. And when it comes to the performance and battery, it seems like the animations are much better and the device is overall more responsive than May 24 update. But I need more time to do my testing for the performance and battery and keep you updated in my follow-up videos. So that's pretty much it for today. That's everything I wanted to show you in June 24 feature drop. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.